welcoming Melissa Armo of the Stocks Push. And uh, she's going to talk to us about trade on the side of institutional money and gaps. And uh, I'm going to confess right now, this lady is so flexible and so easygoing. I put the wrong time on all of her emails. So she was like, what is going on here? So thank you, Melissa. Let me finish your introduction and then you take it away. Initially, Melissa was a mortgage banker. She changed industries to pursue a security trading career in 2008. And in 2012, she founded the Stock Swoosh LLC. It's an educational firm that empowers traders with a complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. She's a self-taught day trader with over 10 years of experience. Melissa's specialty is a trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap. Melissa also <laughs> appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. You can watch her on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. And now I'm going to turn it over to you, Melissa. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being so flexible. <laughs> thanks for having me. I appreciate you coming back. Um, we always enjoy you coming. Now, do you like uh, questions on the fly or do you like to wait until you're done with your presentation? Uh, questions on the fly is good. Let me know if you can see my screen. Screen. I kind of tongue tied now. I, I always just like having to confess when I've made a mistake because, you know, I'm perfect and all that. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm here. Can you see my slide? Yes, trade on the side of institutional money. And uh, I think that's the, um, uh, oh, I can't even think of the name of it. You have a skyline there. Yeah, that's the Empire State Building. Empire State Building. Oh, my goodness. Which you okay, I'm going to go take a break. Building. Clearly, I'm dehydrated <laughs> or something. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Sherry. Thanks, everyone. It's a beautiful day here in Manhattan. Beautiful skyline. It's like 60 some degrees here. So I don't know if this is a sign of spring. But I am here today, and it's a good day to talk because we're getting a tremendous amount of volatility this year, 2022, in the market. Today is no exception to that. So I'm going to talk to you about trading on the side of institutional money, which is exactly what I do. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can also call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. When I'm on television, I try to put my hits on there. And I have a lot of videos on YouTube as well. As Sherry said, I appear on pretty much every single major news channel. It's a very interesting time to talk right now. We're seeing what's happening overseas. It is affecting markets. Today, the Fed talk, they're raising rates. That's affecting markets. We're selling off as we speak. We most likely will close today in the next hour and 20 minutes down on the day when we were up this morning on the day. So again, what is volatility? Volatility is something that happens that's unexpected. Could be up could be down. Volatility doesn't necessarily mean selling, although sometimes it does. It means something happens unexpected. Now for me, <laughs> I'll just tell you right now, my bias has been that we will continue to sell off, at least right now. I did not buy this move in the market yesterday. I didn't buy the move in the market today. I didn't think it would hold. It's not holding. I didn't get a chance to read the Fed statements yet, but I know they were only raising rates a quarter point. But there's way too much going on right now. And I think that the market is just not ready to go back up to the highs. And to be honest with you, we've had a sell off since the beginning of the year. And again, we're going to talk about why we're going to talk about institutional money. And that's a topic today. So why is playing institutional money advantageous to you as a trader? Because that is how you can make money trading. If you're going to take a position in something, I like to get a move. I'm looking to make dollars, not pennies. I take a trade, I wanna make a dollar. I take a trade, I wanna make $2. I'm not taking a trade and trying to make 10 cents, 5 cents, 15 cents, okay? You wanna be able to take a position, a concrete position as an individual trader and get a move. The only way that's gonna happen is if you have institutional money on your side, either pushing the stock or the market up or selling it off, and pushing it down or shorting it, okay? That's how you get the moves. So this was, I clipped this from this morning. Actually, this is really good here because the market doesn't look anything, anything like this. This was about uh, seven minutes till noon. Market doesn't look like this right now. We came down, fell this morning, fell, and we are now red on the day. 
So talking about momentum, this is how you make money in the market, trading momentum. So I was talking about gaps. We're gonna talk about what a gap is here today. I'm gonna to explain it to you, but my strategy is trading gaps, but it's looking for institutional money. Are they buying the gap? Are they selling the gap? What is happening? But it's all based on spotting and pinpointing momentum to play it, okay? That's the whole point, that's the whole idea. Here's going back to the beginning of this year, calendar year 2022. Again, market attempted a new high in the Qs, failed. Last new high in the QQQs was right over here. It was November of last year. That's a long, 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 long time ago. Hard to believe, but true. Anyways, going over here, here's the sell-off, here's the sell-off, here's the sell-off, here's the sell-off. Again, this bar has been totally reversed from today. It's gone already. Now, where will we be tomorrow morning? Well, I don't know. I will have to wait till tomorrow morning. But if we close today red, which I think we will, then we're probably going to be down tomorrow morning. So again, what has been happening in the market so far this year? The market's been selling off, okay? Quite different from last year. Let's talk about PayPal, another good chart which shows you momentum, okay? Again, going back to the beginning of the year, starting out in January, take it over, PayPal was around 187.50. And again, this was, I took this from earlier today, I don't know if this reversed too, it probably did. But this stock basically lost almost half its value since January, since the beginning of this year. So we're two weeks into March. That is momentum to the downside, to the downside. So if you've been shorting PayPal, which we, we were doing, we've done puts, we've done options in PayPal, we've shorted it outright, done the equity, shorted it, we've made money. Again, if you're going long PayPal, the momentum is not up, you'd be losing money. So you can make a lot of money playing momentum, but you have to find it, you have to spot it, you have to pinpoint it right, otherwise you're gonna lose. And the thing about institutional money is it's big, it's quick, it's fast. Like today when you saw when the Fed announcement came, boom, the, all the rally from was gone, gone and so quickly, quickly, quickly. So what happened that happened? How does it happen? Volume, momentum, money, big, 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 big money that comes in and is selling. It's actually selling the rallies. That's what we've been seeing. So learning what to do is very important when risking your own money in the market. And you'll see this since the beginning of this year, even today. Because if you wanna trade in this market or any market, you've got to know what to do. So people come to me, they sign up for subscriptions for trade ideas, they sign up for education, because they wanna learn what I know that took me about three years to develop on my own. So I, I began trading in 2008. Again, it's 2022, feels like a long time ago, 14 years, but I didn't know how to trade when I started. Took me three years to develop my system, my gap system, and we're gonna talk about that here today. But it is so important for people to know what to do. If you're watching the news or taking ideas on the fly, you've been getting crushed this year. Again, today is a great day because people bought this dip in the market and it is gonna disappear and could disappear within 24 hours. So I'm not really even surprised. So here is 2022. This is the SPY. We looked at the Qs. What happened in the SPY? The ZTF for the S&P ran up. The SPY did make a brand new all-time high at the beginning of the year. Failed. Failed. Boom, boom, boom. Sold off hard. This is into the third week of January. And then we had another hard sell-off into February. And now here we are today. Again, this has been reversed. This has been reversed today. I don't know where we close. But this year looks very different than last year where we had a very strong market, a very bullish market where, where the momentum was up. You could have bought strong stocks last year. You could have bought the market last year. You could have bought weak stocks last year and made money. You could have bought anything and made money in 2021. It fundamentally made no sense with the backdrop of the economy and everything that was happening politically, but the reality is the market kept going up. Things are not happening like that this year. Times are changing. Now, whether you're here to learn something to do, to trade as far as on the side or because you wanna do this full time, I don't know. But you can trade on the side and make money while you're working full time or you can do it full time. I think you need a plan of action if you wanna do that. I have people that are working full time and trading options with me. They just get the options trades. I have people that are trading part time in the trading room, go to work in the afternoon. And then I have people that are trading full time. So it's really up to you what you wanna do, but you can do this on the side if you wanna make extra money, which is a good idea right now. Why? We're in a period of inflation. Gas prices are going up, food prices are going up, everything is going up, 
It's going to continue. The Fed also came out and said their target for inflation is still at 2% to be down by that in December 2022. I absolutely do not agree with that. They were wrong last year when, when they gave that as a target. They said it was temporary inflation. They were wrong then. They're going to be wrong again this year. And in my opinion, raising rates, it's too late, too late to do it. They're, they're going to create more of a problem by doing so because the cost of things is going up. Because how do you get everything? Like, how does everything come to New York City where I live by truck? So the, the truck delivers and all, gas prices go up, so food, the cost of everything goes up. It's happening all across the country, all across the world. It's not going to stop, and raising rates is not going to stop it either. And in fact, I think that's going to hurt uh, people's pocketbooks as well. So we're in a very interesting time right now where really your only option is what? Earn more money, make more money. You can work extra hours, get a second job, try to get a raise, or you can invest your money in the market, you could trade your money in the market, you could try to make extra money part-time on the side. The bottom line is that you, you and you alone are responsible for your own financial future. You can't leave it up to the, the overall economy, you can't leave it up to obviously the people that are in the White House. You have to take your own life and make some decisions for yourself. It may mean work, it may mean a cost to doing this, it may mean you have got to learn something new which you never did before, but in the end, you'll be better off three months from now, six months from now, or a year from now if you take it, take it on the chin and learn and pay the cost and book the time. Because the fact is, I see things are going to continue to go up. And again, I disagree with what the Fed's been saying. They haven't been right about anything in a long time as far as I'm concerned. And mainly because there was still a problem with the supply chain. There's a major, major supply chain crisis still going on. You can tell that as a consumer. I can tell that when I go to the store. That isn't going to change or help by increasing rates. If anything, it's going to make it worse. Again, because the cost of getting goods and services to you and to me is going to go up because oil prices are going up. And I can see the questions. If anybody has any questions, you can just plop it in. So getting back to what I was talking about, institutional money. This is how I make decisions. You need a strategy to spot institutional money beforehand, beforehand so that you know to get in. Many people have been buying the dip. They brought the dip back here. This was late February. They bought the dip in here. This was the beginning of March. They bought the dip in the last two days. It's failing and ready today. Many people trade as their strategy, which is buy the dip. It hasn't worked the entire year of 2022 at all. Now, again, this is a very different market than 2021. So you might have done something last year that worked and now this year it's not working. Overall, buying the dip isn't a strategy. Sometimes it works. Sometimes anything works. Sometimes buying a Reddit stock works. It doesn't mean that you should do it all the time. At the end of the day, you need to do something that works consistently in order to make money trading. You have to gotta be in it for the long haul. It's the idea of doing something Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday that works in any market conditions, bullish or bearish, and it's the idea of finding the particular stock that you want to get that is being bought by institutions or sold off by institutions. So again, you can make money in the market. People do it all the time. However, not everyone does. Why? Because most people go with the crowd. The crowd has been buying the dip. It's wrong. It worked in 2021, like I said, even for weak stocks. I never do that. It doesn't work. It doesn't work consistently. Just because something worked as a once-off doesn't mean you should ever do it. And it's very rare that the market ever power trends even up for that to continue. Anyways, making money is about consistent, consistent gains. So again, even if it's a little bit, I call it chunking it out. It's not sometimes. $200, $300, $500, $1,000, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. I think it's a lot easier for people to set their goals and say, I wanna make this much per week, this much per day, this much per month, break it down. Because sometimes when people have too big of a goal, they can't wrap their head around that goal and look at it on an annual basis. So make it small and break it down trade by trade, day by day. Talk about momentum, talk about institutional money. <laughs> Let's talk about CBX. Now, this is Chevron. This is a ticker symbol for Chevron. We were talking about, I said, you know, don't buy this market here, don't buy this dip. This is one thing that I do like. I do like higher, okay? This is an oil stock. This is the strongest of any of the picks of any of the oil stocks right now. Stronger than XOM, even though we did do a trade in that the other week and it worked as a one day off. But this, 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 this is higher. And so let's talk about momentum. I was saying institutional money. What happened here? This was just a couple of weeks ago. Again, not even a month ago. Today is the 16th. Back in here, 
rallied. This was around 135, flew up like a rocket, almost to 175. How did it do that? Ran up 40 points. How did that happen in the span of two weeks? The stock got bought. It got bought. The momentum was where? To the upside. Buying came in, took the stock to new highs. And again, this is institutional buying, big money. Down here's the volume. Okay, this was the biggest day. That was where it ran up almost to 175. So the momentum in a stock like this was up. You would have wanted to be long here, okay? You would not have wanted to be short. The only way to make money here would be going long, not short. So how do I find institutional money? What is my strategy? It's gaps. So why gaps? Because gaps are created with institutional money. Most of the ones that I'm looking for anyways. Most stocks in any single given day will gap. What is a gap? The gap is the difference between the close and the open. That's it. You can have bullish gaps, you can have bearish gaps. I'm looking for gaps that are made with institutional money. I use a way that's a checklist that I go through in the morning to qualify the gap, to determine if I want to go long and to short it. That is what I do. Not every bullish gap can you go long or short. Not every bearish gap can you short or go long. So I qualify to find what I call the good ones, the ones that I want to take, the ones that I want to train, which is fewer than you would think. So in any ways, again, most stocks will gap on any day. Doesn't mean it's playable. So I'm constantly, constantly looking to find the good ones. You only need one good trade a day, one good ticker symbol a day, that's it. That's all that you need. You can do it as an option, you could do it as a swing trade, you could do it as a day trade, you could do it as everything. That's it. You will have less losses if you take less trains. You will also have bigger wins if you focus on finding the good things to do. It is about quality, not quantity, okay? So again, I didn't go long this mark this gap up today in the market. It's failing, like I said. It wasn't a good bullish gap per my system. But let's talk about what is a gap. I'm just gonna explain there's a lot of gaps. A zero ball chart of the market here, SPY going back to October. Let's go back to well, let's go all the way over here. This was November, November of 2021. Market closed here, gap down. So what is a gap? When the market closes, it always closes at four o'clock Eastern. Again, I'm in New York City time zone, so I'm Eastern time zone. At four o'clock, boom, market closes. So whatever number this is, that's the close. It's imprinted there, it's it. Then the next day at 9.30, you have an open. That's over here. In this case here, this gap down. The close was here. The open was here, so the open was lower than the close, so this was a bearish gap. And if you wanted to short this, actually it worked. Now, what is a bullish gap? Again, a gap is a difference between the close and the open. This closed here, this gapped up. So this closed at one price and opened at a higher price. You could have gone long here. And actually there was a trade in here that worked. You could have gone long, okay? That is a bullish gap. There are many gaps in the market. The market gaps most every day. So there are bullish gaps and there are bearish gaps. But a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Let's look at today. Market closed here last night at four o'clock, open up today. Rallying, it's falling, but it did gap up. I didn't do it, but it, it really did gap up, okay? What about over here? What about this guy? This was the eighth. Okay. Oh, no, let's go over here to the seventh. No, let's go over here. This closed here, gap down, fell. This closed here, fell off a cliff. Closed here, gap down, fell. That was the first week of March. Okay. So there are gap downs and there are gap ups. Again, what is a gap? Let's look at Facebook. Another one that has really taken a tumble in recent months, really since 2022. A terrible, terrible, terrible move to the downside. This closed here. This was the night before the earnings. This was Facebook. It was around, I don't know, 315, 316. Open down in the morning here. You can take it over. It was well under 240. So this got crushed in the earnings. So this is a gap down. Okay. We did short this. We did puts in this. We did it. It worked. What about momentum? We've been talking about momentum. Again, I pinpointed the momentum would continue it down. Therefore, it's going to keep being pushed down and sell off. And that is what happened here. The stock really, again, fell off a cliff. 
went under 200, fell, almost got down to 175, okay? So again, I'm looking for the institutional money. Here's the volume. Institutional money dumped. And again, why? Who cares? I don't know. I don't have time to deal with the fundamentals of this. It was an earnings gap, but the fact is I'm looking at the technicals. I'm looking at the gap. I'm rating the gap and I'm saying, wait a minute, this is going to get sold off by institutions. Therefore, it is a short. The stock price is lower. You can do a put in it or you can short it, okay? Now, again, can you short every bearish gap? No. Here was a gap down here that flipped. Stock closed here, gap down, reversed. If you shorted this here, you lost. So you cannot short every gap down, but I'm trying to find the good ones that I can to short. Just like I'm trying to find the good ones to go long, I can go long, similar to, like I said, I did not go long the market today because I did not like the market today as a long. I'm trying to find the best thing that I can do that institutions are going to grab hold of and create the momentum. Because what is momentum? It, what makes a stock move up? Buying, which is, has to, ha, happens how? Money. Money comes in. Same thing with selling. How does something go down? How does it get pushed down? It gets dumped, sold off, and shorted. And hedge funds can short. So when I say institutional money, I mean hedge funds, big, big banks, okay, which take big positions in stocks. But getting back to what I was saying, you only need one good thing to make money, one good trade every single day. And I go through in the morning a checklist to rate the gap to determine that for myself. You also need a method and structure to enter and exit the pick. So if you get a great entry, a perfect entry, and get the direction right, it really doesn't matter where you get out. You can hold it, get out the first move. You can get out to a holder move. You can split it. Get out of some, hold the next to a bigger target. It, I, my goal every day is to never want to get the direction right. Get something that's gonna have a big, big move and get a perfect, perfect, perfect entry. You get an early entry in something. In other words, you go long and get in near the low of the day and you sure to get in near the high of the day. It, it really, you have the flexibility of getting out wherever you want because you have such a good entry, such a good entry. So my goal is always to get an aggressive, perfect, perfect entry in something so that I could take out the position off, hold if I want to or get out early, all right? It's the idea of seeing it ahead of time in the post-market or the pre-market when I'm seeing, in fact, the gap. That is where the gap is being created, and that's how I'm getting in so early to be able to get the trade. Now, let's talk about some of the trades we did. This is Zoom, and this is a nice one here because it really doesn't look like much, but it actually was a beautiful trade. So this is Zoom over here. See this with the taily guy? This closed here, gap down, fell. We shorted it. That's a gap down. And we shorted it. Another one, momentum. Talk about momentum. Look at what this chart has done since November or even since January. Again, stock was around here 175. This lost almost half its value too. So this was the one minute in Zoom. Again, here is the momentum. Here is the institutional money. Selling, pushing it down. Push, push, push. Dropped. Dropped into 1015. So we did a nice trade in that. So what was the trade? The entry was 117.50. This is a day trade on margin. You have to have a broker's account that's a margin account in order to do active day trades. 800 shares was a risk of 30.40. 117.50, we added. Total share 1,600. Average price was 117.50. We exited at 114.75. That I thought that was a good exit. It did continue lower. $4,400 profit. You could have taken less size. You could have risked $1,000, 1500 and still had a great trade. The idea is to get in at the perfect, perfect price point and then also to get the move. Again, this is what you want to play. This is the momentum. And it's being created by the gap right over here. Okay, that was three, two, three, two. Anyways, I have a live trading room where I call trades live, where I call the entry exit and stop in the room. That was something that we did. Here's another one that we did. We did Boeing. And what's really interesting about this one here is this close here, gap down, fell. We shorted it. It reversed on the day. That was another Fed day. We, we shorted this though. And we made money and got out before it flipped. But we did puts in Boeing to the downside here. We got that sell off. I have not looked at this today. Actually, I have to go look at that when I'm done. Anyways, Boeing is another one. People have been buying it, buying it, buying it, buying it. I've been shorting it. This closed here, gap down, we shorted it, got the drop, got in, out. Usually for the day trades, I'm looking to get in and out quick, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. This was 228. 
I find that in, when I'm day trading, I want the fast, quick moves. When I'm doing options, I will hold a little bit longer because I'm trying to get a bigger move and I'm trying to get more follow through overnight. So that is what I like to do. Short, quick, fast day trades, holding the options. Again, it has to do with the type of account you have, how much cash you have to trade. Options, you can open up an options account with as little as $2,000. You do not need uh, to have a margin account. You can open up a cash account if you want to trade options. So some people like doing that. A stock like Boeing, obviously this is a little pricing to do it on margin, but you could have also done an option in this too. Entering the short, we did that particular day, February 28th, was 198.50, boom, we got in 1,500 shares with a risk of 2,700, in, out. Again, try, uh, try to get as much as I could of it. Try to get a dollar, a buck 50, 196.90 was the exit, profit $2,400. Again, what's so interesting is that we pinpointed that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful entry, got in, got the drop, up, out, and it flipped. I mean, again, this was a particular day where you wouldn't have wanted to be in anything in the afternoon because of the Fed but and you're seeing that today you're seeing that today i don't play through those fed minutes you never know what's going to happen again today we're selling off as you see but anyways this was a nice short in and out quick that is a day trade you would have needed margin to do that okay and for those of you that don't know what margin is you should look it up and google it no one trades with full-on cash at 100 percent margin is you get four to one of your money at a retail broker so you don't have to have the full cash requirement no one is trading with that. Even big traders use margin to trade. And particularly because we're in and out, we're flat before four o'clock and we're in and out of most trades in you know just several minutes. Any questions here so far? So getting back to what I was saying, if you know what something will do in the stock before it does it, you can make a lot of money. And that is how it happens. It's the idea. It's having a niche to be successful because there's so many people in the market and so many people want to make money and everyone's fighting for the same amount of money. When you go into the market and you're trading, you are not knitting socks and selling them out. You're not making and creating an actual product that you sell and get cash for. You, the person that makes the money when they enter a trade, when I enter a trade and I make money, I'm taking cash from someone else. When I'm shorting this market and people are buying it, I'm taking their money. At the end of the day, this is about who gets it right. And that's one of the very important reasons about following institutional money, because that money is, is always right. It is always right. Always. Gaps are created with large institutional money. That is what makes the gap. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and then confirm that the large money will flow with it. So it's following the footsteps of institutional money in a stock. That is how I do it. And the market. And the market. And again, you can see big, beautiful moves in the market this year. I mean, just we've seen, I've not seen follow through like this in the market in so, 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 so long. And it's so nice to see it. So how much money do you need? Again, if you want to do options, two grand is the minimum at most retail brokers to do options in a cash account. To day trade at a retail place, you need 25000 to have a margin account. You can open up an account with less, but you will have to be at a prop firm if you want to do that, or you will have you will have to be only take a certain amount of trades in a certain amount of days. Call your broker, find out the requirements. I am not a broker, but you can do this with a small amount of money. You just have to work within the parameters that you can do it. As far as your returns, you're looking for one-to-one. -one. If you're risking 500, you're looking to make 500. If you're risking 1,000, you're looking to make 1,000. And again, this is not an exact science. This is an average that you're looking to make. But I have targets on my options newsletter. I have targets. In the trading room, I give the targets. In the class, I teach the targets, okay? Now, let's look at Facebook daily. Again, we talked about this. Again, look at the volume. Look at the momentum. Look at the gap. This was back at the beginning of February. It was an earnings gap. I called an option in this though before the earnings. It was January 13th. I called the 330 Facebook at the money puts that expired on the 21st of that particular day. Let's go look, 113. 113 was here. See this little, see that little bar there where my arrow is? That guy right there. So we did it, take it over, right there. Got the drop, out, boom. Again, doesn't even look like much. 
Doesn't even look like much to anything at all. Just this, getting it at a perfect entry and the momentum and the direction right. Could the drop timing is everything again. And the entry to a beautiful train, beautiful train. Cost was three dollars and eighty cents. Three contracts with a risk of eleven forty. Whatever you risk, it should be the same or close or equal to the same. I don't care what you do. Every trade you take, you got it. You got to keep your risk consistent too. Sold at twelve. Profit was two thousand four hundred sixty dollars. Return on investment two hundred sixteen percent. Again, this doesn't even look like much, and yet it's beautiful. Right here, here's a selling. Get the drop. This fell, closed here, gap down, rallied, gap down again, fell, 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 boom. So again, when we're doing options, we're chunking it too. We're taking to get the momentum, get out. Taking to get the momentum, get out. Same thing with the day trades. Again, a put is a short in an option. We also did that very same day we did Netflix. Stock closed here, gap down, we did it. The strike we did was 520. It costs $13.50, which isn't cheap. One contract, which is $13.50, sold at $24, profit $1,050, 78%. Now, if you held this into the very last day, which I did not do, I'm going to show you in a minute, you could have made an, an enormous amount of money. The close price of the day, of the last day of the expiration was $125. I did look it up and I had it there because I really wanted to see what it was, even though I didn't hold it. So when you're up in a train, it, I don't think it's a good idea to hold it into the last day. This could have reversed under the earnings. It could have gone up here, so you don't know. If you took two, you could have got out of one and held one, but either way, I just wanna show, again, the power of momentum, the power of institutional money, the power of the gap. This closed here, again, was underneath the strike at this point here at 500, boom, open in the morning. But this is the very last day of expiration, open here under 400, and that was why that was worth 125. Again, a huge profit, huge return investment if you held it. I don't know if anybody in my newsletter subscription service did, but it, it's, it's difficult for me to hold through earnings not knowing what the result will be. It could go in your favor, could go against you when you're up in the trade. Now, it's different if I'm down in the trade and I hold it into earnings to see if it goes in my favor, but that was not the case here. This was already up. But again, it shows the power of the gap. Then we did another one that very, very same day again, 113, had the market with us, boom. We did the 471 at the money puts here, got the drop, boom. Beautiful thing. This was another one you could have held in the last day and actually made more money. Again, I did not do that, but this was a good exit here. This dropped down in here, 20 plus plus points. Again, if you've ever done options, you know you've got to get momentum. You've got to, uh, uh, you've got to get it going in your direction. And again, it's timing. Timing, 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 that same day, same time. This is a newsletter subscription I send out to your email. You get it in live time, you take the train. Cost was 340, three contracts, risk 120 or 1020, sold at 24. This was a huge trade. I'm gonna go back and show you the chart in a minute. $6,180 with 1,020 risk. So again, this was the 13th. Got the drop, closed here, gap down. Fell, 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 fell. This is the 20th. Take it over. You see where it dropped. Dropped, fell 304.50. At the last day, it, it almost got to 435. But again, it was a 600% return on investment exit the 20th. I don't know where this went that day. I didn't look it up. So again, momentum. How does it come in? Institution of money, boom, dumped it, sold the market. This is selling. Down, down, down. When you're doing a put, you're basically shorting, okay? So that was a nice call. It's about chunking it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it, no matter what you do, because that's how you're gonna get ahead. That is how you're going to reach your goals. But success or failure is everything to do with the quality of your system. And I think a lot of people, like I said, they don't have a good system. They don't have a good strategy. They're doing things that just quite frankly don't work in any market conditions. And people are seeing that right now. And you also need a niche to be able to be, be successful. And I, I can't believe how many people just don't understand momentum. And again, this is again just from teaching people, talking to people, answering questions. People don't know how to play momentum. They're scared of it or I don't know. They definitely don't understand gaps or how to do them either. People think people want to do gap fills. That doesn't work. So I think that it's just 
finding something that you can understand and really conceptually what I do really just makes a lot of sense. But how do I figure out which stock I'm doing of the day? I go through the points in the morning of a 26 point rating system. It pinpoints the direction of the footprints of institutional money and gaps. This is what you'd come and learn from me if you wanted to take my class, okay? <laughs> you would learn how I read it and what direction that I'm going to do it. I will say that I do tend to go to the short side first. If I don't find a good short, then I will look to the long side, but I prefer to short. One of the reasons I also prefer to short is I feel like I have an itch for that too because many people do not understand how to short or don't know how to short well. And that's another reason why people are getting crushed in this market because again, we've been selling off. We've been selling off. So that's difficult for people when they're looking for something to do. Again, what do I mean by institutional money? It's selling. Stock closed here, Facebook. This is back at the end of November. Gap down, fell, 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 fell. Again, sold off here sold off here, sold off here, sold off all in here. There's probably reverse today too. I'll look at this when I'm done, okay? And you know, when you look at some of these things, some of these stocks, especially in the tech sector, and then you look at where the market is right now, I mean, it's no surprise that the market is not back up at the highs. Again, what do I mean by institutional money? Netflix, this closed here gap down. This was to start out the calendar year, fell. We talked about the one in here, dropped. Then we talked about the one in here. Again, this was earnings. The stock lost more than 100 points in the earnings. Look at that. Fell. Boom. Again, momentum. Selling pressure coming in. So my niche is really following the institutional money in gaps. And I created a system which I termed the golden gap to find it. I go through this process in the morning every single solitary day. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction that the large institutional money is on your side and then you play it. Gaps are an event and they create a sense of urgency. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Thus an action is being forced by participants of the stock. This is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading golden gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power money. And that's what makes it so important because again, you're not going to be able to trade against that and be successful. It is just not possible. Um, someone's asking something about charts. Let me scroll up. I don't make decisions based on that. I could take everything off my charts. We'll see. I may not have time to bring up my charts, Pierre. I look at the gap. I could trade. I could actually trade reading the tape. In fact, some people's charts look like planetary solar systems. I don't even know how they can look at anything. Forget all the stuff. Look at the price. Sometimes when I, well, this has been two years now since I've been in studio on TV, but sometimes I was in the Fox studio, had to go on TV that day, talk about it. Today would be a good day with the market. I'd have to look at the price on my phone, see where it was, didn't have my platform with me, didn't have a chart, and determine where what was happening. You've got to read the price. Get off of some of these indicators. Some of you are just live and die with these indicators. If it was that easy to make money by buying a moving average or, or buying a Fibonacci or selling something like that or doing a whatever you want to call it, whatever people call these different, these different setups, no one would lose people. It would be very easy to trade. There is analyzing and a thought process to what I do. I look at 26 points. It's, it's a skill. It's a skill set. You must learn the skill set. It is not black and white. And I find that's another thing that people have difficulty with as well. They want to just, they want to just, ah, they want to get on this one thing and swear to God by it. And, and, and you can't trade like that. You just can't. And again, people that are taking positions, institutions that are taking the positions, they are making decisions based on lots and lots of information that we're not privy to. They're talking to the administration. They're buying research reports. They're watching what's happening overseas. They have contacts overseas too. These are huge, big banks also. I mean, you, 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 you have to understand what's going on in the world today. We will never be privy to the information why the institutions are buying or selling any one particular thing in the market. But I can see the gap. I can see the price. We have live data that makes it important. We live in an electronic world. The last umpteen years that I've been trading, we've had electronic data. Data past, you know, I can go back to 1999 in my charts, but prior to that, think back, you know, you know, a hundred years ago, or when the stock market opened. You know, how did people trade? They read what was happening in the price. 
they didn't have moving averages. People just cling on to those things. And sometimes people don't give up on trades that they should get out of with a loss, actually, because they're clinging on to them. But anyways, you have to win more than you lose. It's about being consistent. So year to date, we're 78% win ratio in the trading room and 87% for options. It's It's been a good year. Again, it, it has been a very, very good year. Today Today is another key day. I predicted the market would sell off, and, and it is. I mean, it's, and and people bought this. It's just, it's it's been a very volatile time, but that's made for great trading if you know what to do. Again, we talked about this. We're looking for one-to-one. -one. Make consistent trade, trade selection. You've got to be consistent in your risk. The entry has to be there. The direction has to be right. That's obvious. If you go with the money where it's flowing, you'll get the momentum. Why does this matter? So you know what direction to take the profit because you need money. The money creates the momentum. If it's going up and you're shorting, you're going to lose. If it's going down and you're buying, you're going to lose. Institutional money is very deliberate. It's very deliberate, okay? You're seeing that today. You're seeing that today with a swift sell-off today right after the Fed. You've got to create a plan of action for yourself if you want to be successful. Again, if you want to come and learn from me, what will you learn? A high probability of directional bias for the entire day, finding the best stop, that it's going to have a big move. We're looking for early confirmation of the move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow-through and a risk to reward. So my system is called the Golden Gap. I teach this class once a month, and I teach people how to re read institutional money and the price patterns and gaps. So if you come to me, you will learn how to find and spot and play momentum in the gap, how to pick the best gap, and then how to trade it. And so it's basically a rating system. So there are people with me that are trading with me that have not done the class. Then there are people that have done the class. There are people that are just trading options. It's a subscription service. They've never done the class. They just take the trades. They manage them themselves. I do have targets on the letter. Some people are doing really, really, really well this year. I, I don't necessarily ask everyone what they're risking, but I do get emails from people telling me how they're doing. And again, it's amazing to me because a lot of people are getting chopped up this year, but we're really doing great, as you can see from the win ratio. It's about focus, though. I personally have to stay focused, and I'm not saying this market isn't tricky. I'm not saying that at all. I had two people call me today that actually manage money for people to ask me what I think of this market. It's funny because I called him back before the Fed, and I said, I still think we're lower, and then we fell. So... It's, you know, people do want my input. I, I focus every day though. I do watch the news, I do watch what's happening. I have to talk on the news, so I need to know what's going on. But it's really the price action. It's really the price action when I'm making a decision. And you have to be serious about this. You're risking your own money. I don't care if it's a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks or 10 grand in a position. You've gotta be serious about risking your money and you shouldn't be taking trades if you don't know what you're doing. Just take a step back and learn what to do. You will get chopped up in this market. It's as easy to make money as it is to lose it, but you won't win if you don't know what to do. What people were doing in 2021 just simply flat out isn't working this year, and we're already almost three months into the year, and I think a lot of people have blinders on, and they're continuing to buy the dip in the last two days. It's not going to work. It's already not working, you know, and people just have these things where they don't want to give up on them, kind of like I was talking about about indicators. Anyways, if you want to come and learn from me, you can. I will teach you my method. Again, it's in a two-day class. I see we're getting close to time. If you'd like more information about my course, you can email me. The dates are March 26th, 27th. It's 9 to 5 Eastern Time. Class is online. Class tuition is $69.99 US dollars. Email me if you want to sign up. And I'm doing a webinar special. If you sign up by Friday, you get the trading room free to the end of the year where you get the live calls. If you want the options trades, it's $49.99 for a six-month subscription and $69.99 for a 12-month subscription. The options trades are emailed to you. And if you want to try, I'll email me too. Um, any other questions? I went a little bit over. I hope that's okay. You're fine. You're fine. We're, get, we're right on schedule, actually, since we did Thank have you,